So I would take your normal setup here like this to start, and I'll give you some more checkpoints and drills as we go. But you're thinking, get the club head and left hip to separate as far away as possible. What that does, think about a slingshot, how that works. You pull that back, it creates all that power, and then boom, you let it go. It's the same way here, the club head and left hip, by pulling them apart, you create this separation that once you let it go, the club head catapults off there. Right? You create all of this effortless speed. And that's what I want you guys to have. I want to gain distance. I want the ball to fly off the club head without it feeling so hard. I want to talk to you today about live view golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live view is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here out at the beautiful Don Law Golf Club at Osprey Point Golf Club in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about the slingshot swing, how you can create effortless power. There's two huge checkpoints I see in all swings that create effortless power, and there's two things you don't wanna do if you're really trying to force your power. We're gonna dig into that. I'll show you how to train that. If you guys do like this video, do us a favor, click that gray thumbs up that, uh, button down below. It really, really helps us out. Spread our video so we can help Help more people I would really appreciate that click the subscribe button if you haven't already also leave a comment down below would love to keep the conversation going I also want you guys to check out kagornogolf.com part of our mission is to help as many golfers as we can this year play better and the things we need to do to be able to do that is see your golf swing I say it all the time these YouTube videos help but to get beyond this I really want to see your swing so we can create a specific plan for you I'm talking about identifying priorities specific drills to do what exactly to feel what to expect along the way how many reps to do what days a week as detail oriented as you want it's a fraction of the cost of our in-person lessons and better yet you have us the whole way we're there 24 7 ask as many questions as you want we're here to guide you really want to help you take your game to the next level would love to see you at kagornogolf.com we'll put that down below so the slingshot swing method, right, and how we can create effortless power, this really came about probably a year or so ago. I was talking to one of our good friends, one of our Cogorno coaches, JT Thomas, about a key concept. We we're talking about creating a training aid at the time, but one key concept of what we see in golf swings, golf swings that create power effortlessly. It never looks like they're forcing the club. And here's what he said to me, and I love this, and I went back and I've been looking at it, and I see it all the time. He said, Eric, Think about during your downswing and watch these players, and how could we coach someone to get the club head and the left hip, so reference those two points, club head and the left hip, as far away from each other as humanly possible during the downswing. Okay, so if you take a club out with me, or just hold something out here with me, and just take a normal setup, and get the club back to about parallel to the ground. So now I've got the club head here, I've got my left hip. Imagine there was like a string line, okay, attached, this is what we were talking about on my left hip to the club head. And it was sort of loose here at this point in time. And I wanted to make that string tight. Feel that club head push back behind you to the right while your left hip pushes to the left. Do you feel those two motions? So you should feel a stretch creating, getting that club head farther away, measured from this side, from the left hip as possible. And we talked about that and I went back and watched swing after swing after swing after swing. I said, son of a gun, He's exactly right. The swings that appeared the most effortless versus the swings that felt like the guys, maybe they had power, gals had power, but it was really forced and took a lot of effort. There was that one variable in it. The effortless swings got the club head. So same thing, club head here, just to feel it. The club head was as far away from the left hip as possible, really between left arm parallel on the downswing and about club parallel. And so we start to train it and we started to do that just to feel it. And I love that feel and I wanted to share it with everyone. So I would take your normal setup here like this to start and I'll give you some more checkpoints and drills as we go. But you're thinking, get the club head and left hip to separate as far away as possible. What that does, 
Think about a slingshot, how that works. You pull that back, it creates all that power, and then boom, you let it go. It's the same way here, the club head and left hip, by pulling them apart, you create this separation that once you let it go, the club head catapults off there. You create all of this effortless speed. And that's what I want you guys to have. I want to gain distance. I want the ball to fly off the club head without it feeling so hard, right? So to start with, there's a couple ways to do this. Number one, take your normal setup with both hands. Let's get the club back to parallel to the ground, just like a backswing, just to pose this. And, and let's feel the club head work behind you to the point where right now it's about on my toe line. I like to get it back behind my heel line. Now, as I'm doing that, I'm doing that mostly with my wrists, my forearms, arms, and hands. I don't want my arms to pull back when I do this. Key concept. My right arm and arm stays in front of me. I'm getting the club head back here with my wrist angle, some arm rotation. Now, as I'm doing that, let's make my left hip feel like it pulls away from the ball as much as possible. And really, if we use the ball as like a center point, that's what I want to see. How can I get the club head farther from the ball? and get my left hip farther from the ball at the same time. And you're gonna feel a little bit in your body in terms of storing tension and creating some separation here. Now from this position, if I were to swing and let that go, again, that's where that club head is just gonna fly through. Now a couple key checkpoints I want you to do here before you feel this. I'm gonna take these two alignment rods and you'll see some pictures here as to some checkpoints. And I want you to reference the club parallel to the ground. You're gonna feel these moves really from the top of the backswing, but I want you to reference it so you know if you're doing it correctly or not. Take one alignment rod or stick, and I'd like you to put this through your belt loops, ideally, okay? If not, then use video and reference your hip um, rotation. And the second stick I'm gonna put on the ground, 12 o'clock, one, two, threes down my toe line. I want this club head in between, or the shaft, in between about 3.34 o'clock. So it's not down my toe line, it's in about 3.30, four o'clock. Now what you'll see with these players is when they get down to club last parallel, the club head is in just inside their hands at about 330. At that same position, that stick is over there. It's not straight down at nine o'clock. That stick is well to the left between seven and eight o'clock. And that's really the differential there, that like V you want to create between the shaft and your hip line, where most players that I see the shaft and the hip line point in the same direction. The shaft's down the toe line or slightly outside. See that these sticks are the same angle? Now my club head and my hip are really close together. That is, if you've got power from there, it takes a lot of effort. What I wanna have happen is the butt of the club and the sh this shaft and my hip line point in different directions. Do you see that? So my stick line points left, my butt of the club line points right. That's a huge concept there, I'm gonna do that again. Now watch as my left hip rotates less and my club comes out in front of me. Here's my club head and my hip getting closer together. That's weak, no power. Here's power, farther apart, boom. So the first thing we like to do when we train this is you to learn how to get the club over 330 while getting this stick on the ground over, again, here's 12 o'clock, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So somewhere between eight and seven o'clock, if you guys are sticking with me with the clock here, that's where I want your hip to get to. That's how you would train this, create the separation, create the slingshot. So up to the, take your uh, normal setup, and then let's go up to the top of your backswing. Now I want the shaft to get to eight o'clock or seven o'clock, um, the, the shaft in my hips, and I want this shaft, the club shaft, to get over 3.30, one. Up to the top. So my hips get to seven or eight. The club's at 330 by parallel to the ground. So I might feel like your hips are more open than normal. Now I'm not pushing them open with my hips back. My hips have still went a little bit forward as they push open. That's two. And I do one more rehearsal. Stick over there, club on the ground. And I would do a set of two or three rehearsals. You can hit with this in as well. And then I take that out, feel the same thing without that stick in. So the hip gets over to eight or seven while the club is over 330. And then I'm gonna feel that. I'm gonna feel the club shaft over 330 while my hip feels like it's going over to seven or eight o'clock. Let's go ahead and feel one. And that's the separation that I'm looking for to create effortless power. If you're used to 
being someone who's over the top too much or the shaft gets too steep, if you don't get the shaft over 330 and it gets out over like two o'clock, you're never gonna get the hip over to seven or eight because you're always gonna have to stand up to fix that. You're always fighting the shaft. When the shaft gets behind you, the club head gets behind your hands, angled this way, there's a, that club head wants to even out, right? That club head wants to get back even with the shaft this way. When you get it here, it wants to get back even with the shaft too. That looks like this, handle back shaft four. This is how you wanna play golf. The club head and shaft shallows with the hips opening. So I would do like two to three rehearsals with the stick in, get the shaft through your hips over seven or eight with the shaft over 330 seven or eight, 330. And then I'm feeling the same thing when I'm hitting, getting the club head more behind me as my hips open. And there's another one that feels effortless to me compared to normal. All right, guys, one quick note here as you're practicing this, I'd really like for you to feel the good versus the bad to really ingrain these feelings. If you take a setup with the club right down your toe line here, feel the club head being out. Here'd be the bad version, right? The club head's kicked out. My hips haven't turned at all. The club head and my hips are very close together. Now feel that stick working to the left and the club head working back. And then go back to the bad. They get closer together. This would be bad. Feel them separate. Keep that right arm in front of you. Make sure that doesn't kick out. So right arm stays in front, doesn't go behind me. Feel them get closer. Feel them separate. And really reference that stick. If you struggle with the hip rotation, get that stick working around you. So just feel those, it's a really good way to learn that feel in the good versus the bad. It starts with getting the shaft behind you because that wants to even out. And once you have the shaft getting over this 330 number using video to confirm, then you can start to get the hips more open. That'll be easier to do, but I would do them at the same time. The concept is club head and left hip as far apart as possible. If you wanna hit the ball as far as you can with as little effort as possible, that's pretty much a non negotiable in my book, that's how I would do it. We're gonna go ahead and link a video similar to this about how to start the downswing to create speed. If you guys like this video, go ahead and watch that. Also, we're gonna put a link to Cogorno Golf. Like I mentioned, if you guys want a specific plan how to take your game to the next level and you want more guidance along the way, be able to ask us as many questions as you want, go ahead and check out Cogorno Golf. We'd love to see you there.